Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Camille. I am a first year medical student as well as a registered nurse. And today I just want to make a quick video regarding my timeline going from nurse to now medical student. I had a couple of comments in the comments section requesting a video, just kind of detailing more of how I went from being a nurse to now attending medical school. So without further ado, let's get started. So I already made a video kind of roughly outlining my journey from going from a nurse to now medical student. However, I wanted to make this video a little bit more specific in my timeline and how I went from kind of my high school journey through nursing school and then into now medical school. Um, so kind of to begin in high school, my freshman year that summer, I decided to take a psychology course at my local community college. I found out that there is a way of getting approval to take community college courses while still enrolled in high school. Really, the only thing I needed to do was submit a form from my counselor saying that I met above a minimum GPA and I understand the rigors of this course and so on and so forth. So I submitted that form got approved, then I was able to enroll in that Psych 101 course. I really just wanted to take an upper level class and just kind of see um, what the college rigors were. Um, also, I just had an interest in psychology and more science related uh, classwork that we did not have offered at my high school. So I was like, why not? Let's try it out. Let's see how it goes. So I took that course over the summer. I really liked it. It was great. Um, and then that following fall semester, I decided to enroll in an emergency medical responders course or an EMR course. It was really a preliminary course for like EMT students um, to kind of get their feet wet. And then they would take another course after that and then apply and sit for their EMT license exam. Unfortunately, I was too young at the time to be eligible to sit for that exam. So I decided to just take the EMR certificate and move on. But I did learn a lot of great lessons in that course, like um, simple things, but it was really fun for me, right? It was like my first introduction to like actual medicine, healthcare type um, information. So we learned like CPR, splinting, um, you know, taking care of like wounds and cuts and abrasions and stuff of that nature. It was a pretty basic course, but I think it did a great job of just outlining a little bit of like first response medicine, which I thought was awesome. So after that, um, again, that kind of got me hooked more um, towards the healthcare and medical field. So I decided to continue, you know, in high school, obviously I had to do well in my classes and stuff of that nature. And it was an extracurricular activities. Um, but then that summer, so summer of my sophomore year, I decided to take a CNA course, um, again, at the local community college. And this gave me my certified nurse assistant license. So I sat for that test, passed it, um, and then I was able to land a job at a nursing home. So as a certified nurse assistant, I really, um, you know, helped with ADLs, so activities of daily living of different patients or residents or wherever I was working at the time, right? So bathing, clothing, um, helping ambulate, go to the bathroom, uh, simple tasks of that nature. Um, it was a very hard job, but it was also very humbling and was a great experience. I got to work closely, you know, I got to build great relationships with the patients I worked with, um, also with my fellow nurses and other coworkers. It was a great team environment and a learning experience too, which I loved. Um, and I made some great friends, some lifelong friends from that first job as well. So um, after that, I was just kind of looking around and seeing, you know, different opportunities within healthcare. I knew I wanted to do something in the healthcare field, but I wasn't too sure yet. Um, medicine was always in the back of my mind, even from this point, right? Like, oh, I want to be a doctor. But I also knew realistically thinking um, that medical school is super expensive. It's a very long journey. And unfortunately, at this point in time, I really did not have the funds, um, the resources that I needed to, you know, um, support myself. Um, through such a rigorous and long journey. Um, so I was just looking at different options and seeing what else I can do within healthcare that I thought would be a great fit for me, right? So I stumbled upon nursing and some of the my fellow nurse coworkers were talking with me like, hey, why don't you just go into nursing school? It's a great field. Um, and, you know, I see what they did and I thought it was a great um, experience. And again, even as a nurse now, I love what I do. I think it's phenomenal. I think the whole profession's awesome. Um, I will still think it's awesome even when I am a physician. Um, it's just I wanted to go further and wanted to experience medicine from a different side, right? Um, so anyway, going back on track here. Um, so talked with some of the nurses and then looked into the requirements for nursing school. So at this time, I was about a junior in high school. Um, and I went and contacted one of the... Um, 
nursing counselors at my community college sat down with them and, you know, discussed like, hey, would it be possible for me to start nursing school while I'm still in high school, right? My senior year of high school. I noticed that they had a um, day program and a night program, right? So the day's program is really classes are anywhere from 8 a.m. to like 3 p.m., um, which obviously I couldn't do since I'd be still in high school. But then they also had a night program, which classes and coursework and everything kind of went from 3 p.m. Um, till 11 p.m., right? So that'd be like their block of time that they had to fit in class and coursework and tests and all that stuff, right? So sat down with her. She was kind of um, not really for the idea, said, you know, that's kind of impossible. Why would you want to do that? No one ever has done this, like whatever, whatever. Um, kind of brushed me off that sense. But I was like, well, you know, it doesn't say anywhere that I need a high school diploma, correct? Like, I read through all the fine print, looked at all the different websites, looked at what the requirements were. Um, I met some of the requirements. I also took like anatomy and physiology one already during, um, I think it was actually that fall, I was already enrolled in anatomy and physiology one, again, just because I wanted to do some more medical related classes and coursework that I didn't have offered at um, my high school, right? So did that. And then I was like looking through the course requirements, like the only requirement that I didn't have at the time um, that I needed was taking the T's test, which the T's test is like the MCAT for nursing school, right? So it's like the entry exam that you need to take. Um, you need to score, you know, as good as you can. It's like a standardized test. Um, and then the higher the score, the that's like one component of your application, right? It doesn't make your entire application, but it's one component of it. So did that. Um, signed up for it, even though she's told me like, you know, that's probably not going to work, whatever. I didn't really listen to her. I mean, like I took her advice, you know, she kind of told me like what other classes I needed this and that, you know, some psychology courses, some sociology, something, something. Um, and then, you know, like I needed, I think it was like, um, a gen bio course or something, which then I took AP bio anyway. So that covered that. Um, but regardless, so did that applied my, the spring of my junior year of high school to get accepted for the fall of uh, my senior year, right? So um, sent in my application, you know, I was like, okay, whatever, we'll see what how it goes. Um, received an acceptance letter. Um, they didn't ask me for my high school diploma, didn't ask for a GED, didn't ask for anything. The only requirement that I could find was that you must be 18 by the end of your first semester. So going into nursing school, I was 17, but my birthday is in like November. So I would be 18 by the end of the first semester. So I checked that off and I was like, I'm good to go. Um, needless to say, you know, I went through orientation, nothing of it, signed up for my classes, got my books, got everything, got ready um, and started going to nursing school my senior year of high school too. So um, no one really in my class knew until like one of the um, one of my classmates was like, hey, do you want to go out for a drink with us right afterwards? I'm like, oh, no, sorry, I can't. Um, I I have school tomorrow. And they were like, what do you mean you have school tomorrow? Like, we don't have class until three. I was like, no, I, I have school in the morning. And they're like, where are you taking extra classes? I'm like, no, I'm still in high school. So like no one really knew. And it was kind of a crazy experience. But again, it's the way I kind of did it. And I think I wouldn't say I cheated the system. I just kind of figured out my options and did what was allowed. I didn't do anything illegal, right? I followed all the rules. I went through all of the processes and applied just like anyone else um, and got accepted, right? So um, kind of a little bit more of my schedule, how my senior year looked. So I still worked um, as a CNA on the weekend. So I worked overnight. Um, however, my schedule this time kind of changed a little bit. So I would work overnights Friday to Saturday. And then um, I would go home, sleep for a couple hours and then come for the Instead of the night shift on Saturday, I would come for the PM shift. So I would work 11 P till 7 A Saturday morning, go home for a couple hours sleep and then come back around 2 PM on Saturday and work till 11 PM. Just like that would be like my entire block. And then I would take Sunday off and do whatever I needed to studying and catching up on life stuff. Right. Um, so anyway, kind of throughout the week, although, you know, nursing school is very varied in classes and how everything works. My typical um, schedule would be I'd wake up, go to high school. I think we started at seven, if I'm uh, if I remember correctly, seven a.m. till about two thirty uh, p.m. I would get out of high school. I would go home, eat something really quick, um, switch my backpacks, right? So take all my um, high school stuff out of my backpack and throw in all my nursing books and nursing notes and stuff, and then uh, go to nursing school, right? So nursing school, we had classes pretty much every day. I think we had like one or two days off a week, typically. 
um, but classes would be anywhere from 4 to 6 p.m. or like 5 to 9 p.m. And then if we had like a clinical that day, it could have been, you know, from 3 p.m. till 10 or from like 4 till 8 or something of that nature. But typically I would be in school um, for nursing roughly anywhere from two hours to six plus hours a day um, after school. So then after that, I would come home and I would study, you know, for both high school and nursing school, kind of catch up on stuff and review information and get ready for the next day. And then I would go to sleep. Um, needless to say, I did not sleep too much uh, during that last year. However, um, I do think it was still worth it. It was a it was a great experience. It definitely taught me um, what my priorities are in life. And it definitely taught me how to uh, manage my time well and figure out what really is important and how to study that information. Um, which was a great tool that I even use till today. Um, I will say uh, medical school is definitely different than nursing school. Um, it is a lot more rigorous. There's a lot more information that you need to learn. However, some of the practices that I've learned, you know, from nursing school, um, especially studying wise have helped me. Um, I will say it is still a huge learning curve, even for myself. Um, and I think I'll make a video later on kind of, you know, once I'm further on my medical journey, seeing how nursing has helped me or hindered me um, from, you know, doing well in medical school or better or whatever the case may be, right? So that was that. Um, and then that was my entire senior year of high school. And then I graduated um, high school. And then after the first year at the program that I was in, you can sit for your LPN boards, which is your licensed practical nurse boards. So I sat for those boards and got my LPN license. So um, LPN and RN, really the main differences is LPNs, you cannot assess patients. Typically, um, at least in Illinois where I live, um, you can't really work at a hospital or bigger hospitals. Typically, um, you're limited to more like nursing homes or doctor's offices and uh, things of that nature. Um, and then another big thing is you cannot start IVs or administer IV medications. Um, otherwise, the two fields are pretty similar, right? LPN versus RN. Um, so I got my LPN license and then I continued working at the nursing home that I was working at. Um, but as an LPN now, right? So I was in that nursing role um, and did that again throughout school the following year. Um, so after high school, right, I continued my nursing program, which is a two-year program. So um, finished my nursing degree then one year after high school. So that was my associates in nursing. Um, and then that same year, I did also start my bachelor's um, in nursing. So the community college that I went to has a lot of um, good connections with local universities. So I applied and got into one of their like um, RN to BSN programs is what it's called, right? So associate's degree to BSN. Um, but I did not have my associates at the, yet at the time, but that program allowed you to do prerequisite stuff that you needed. So like I took, um, I think it was like a philosophy course and like a um, research and nursing course or something of that nature um, while I was still finishing my associates. Um, so I was kind of dual enrolled then too, right? So I was enrolled in my community college courses as well as my um, uh, BSN courses as well, right? So did that, then finished my associate's degree. Um, and then I was then after my associate's degree, so one year after high school, I was an RN, sat for my um, RN boards, um, passed those, and then landed a job working at a neuromedical surgical ICU at a local community hospital. Um, and then I did that for about a year, which was a huge learning curve, right? Um, and it was really at that point when I started working at the hospital that I was like starting to think like, hey, you know, maybe I do want to do medicine. Maybe I do want to um, go into, you know, becoming a doctor, looking into that. So I had to just start doing some research, you know, and like what it takes, what I need courses. And one thing that I did like is that there was a lot of courses that did overlap that I did not need to take, but there was still a bunch that I did need to take in addition from like what I did in nursing. Right. So some courses that I did not have completed, like all the um physics courses, orgo courses, stuff of that nature, I did not have completed. So I did have to take those. Um, but it was nice because about, I would say about 50%, maybe a little bit less than that. Um, I did already have completed with my uh, nursing degree, right? Um, so worked there and then kind of towards, I would say, so I got my RN and started working in August um, at the ICU job. And then I would say probably around March is when I really started considering maybe February. I would say February, I really started considering, you know, getting my MD and going into medical school. Um, and then a future video, I'll kind of explain why I decided to do MD and not 
CRNA or NP. Um, everyone has their own reasons and opinions for, you know, doing one or the other. Um, and then I had my own too that I will share with you guys in a future video here. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of when I did decide to, you know, hey, I think I want to do medicine. Now what I need to do. So I was looking around programs and actually the university that I went to for my bachelor's in nursing um, did also have a post -bac program, right? So when I was working in the ICU, I was finishing up my bachelor's. So two years after high school, I got my bachelor's in nursing. So that is when I was still at the ICU job, right? Yeah. So I was at the ICU job um, and then I decided, hey, I want to do med school, looked at my resources. I was still at the university and then I decided to do a post -bac at that same university. So I started my post -bac really one, really like right after I got my bachelor's. That's when I started my post -bac, right? Um, so I did my post -bac degree. And then at that time, I did transition from an ICU position to an IR position, so interventional radiology, which is kind of where I am now um, in my career as a nurse. Um, and I've been there for, you know, two plus years now um, and then did my post -bac while still working. Right. So post -bac included all those big heavy science courses that I just needed for medical school, finished my post -bac and then applied to medical school right after. So I was finishing up my post -bac and getting my application ready, applied really during that time was kind of crazy because that was actually when COVID really hit, um, got really bad. So, you know, you had the first wave then the second wave then the third wave, and it just kept getting worse and worse. So a lot of my time um, really was taken away from, you know, studying for the MCAT and finalizing my application to really helping out the hospital and working. Um, you know, I think everyone can appreciate how difficult it was um, anywhere in healthcare, um, especially in the nursing sector too. I see um, there was a lot of, you know, burnout and a lot of, you know, devastation and, and hard times really, right? We needed a lot more staff than um, we had, and we had a lot more patients that needed our help, right? So I think I did forfeit some studying time to um, aid my fellow nurses and aid my fellow patients and people and just really do my due diligence to society and worked probably more than I should have um, to, you know, help out as much as I could. You know, I remember working some weeks, 80 hours, um, you know, working my full-time job um, in interventional radiology and then helping out in the ICU after my shift or on a Saturday or an overnight shift or, you know, picking up five hours, eight hours, whatever I can just to, you know, be just even an extra set of hands to to help out with whatever they need, proning patients or turning or drips or medications or running patients to CT and MRI and all the other things, right? There's, there's always a ton of stuff. And really at that time, like everyone was COVID positive in the hospital and we had no supplies and it was just a, uh, it was a crazy hectic time. It was a huge learning experience. Uh, learned a lot of re resiliency and saw a lot of uh, a lot of um, interesting, you know, things happen and and so on and so forth. So, but yeah, I kind of got off topic right there. But um, anyway, so finished my post back up, applied, and then got an interview, got an acceptance, and then really kind of had like a gap year. I'm more of like a glide year, right? Because I never really took like an official gap year per se, but it was a glide year, meaning I applied, got accepted, but I did not start school and didn't have anything for school for an entire year, right? So like I almost had like a year off of school, but I used that year to work and, um, you know, kind of enjoy life before medical school started. So that's, I know this video is long, sorry guys, um, but that was kind of like my my journey and kind of like my timeline more in depth for those of you who wanted this video um, hopefully it was helpful. Hopefully you kind of learned a little bit more. Um, you know, if you like this video, please subscribe to this channel. If you haven't done so already, leave a comment down below. If you want any, you know, more clarification, have any suggestions for future videos. I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, really want to curate this channel to you, um, use it as a learning platform, but also just a platform to share my story and answer your questions. Um, so that's all I have for you guys today. So everyone have a great day and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.